My name is Dr. James Alvarez. I'm a physical therapist, and we're here to talk about the multifactorial nature of pain, which Dr. Hirsch mentioned in the previous video. Um, so he mentions a, a few things, such as like anxiety and depression or sleep deprivation, which can kind of increase um, that threat level um, and make your body a little bit more sensitive to stimuli. So um, some of the other factors which can contribute to a heightened sensitivity include the sleep deprivation. So think of a time where you've been exhausted after a long day of work and you have to get up early the next morning and your body just feels kind of run down and achy. Um, that can be just because of that extra stress on the body. Um, and that, that plays a role in pain just like it does in your everyday life. Um, immune function, so if you're dealing with any kind of illness or um, other multi-system involvement, so if you have comorbidities, uh, whether it's another orthopedic injury going on or diabetes, um, or you just had another kind of surgery that can play a factor as well. Um, the psychosocial factors such as anxiety and depression play a large role, not only with the hormones that are produced with this, um, but in terms of how you perceive how things are going on. So a few of the factors there, we're gonna look at kind of a graph to demonstrate how that can increase your sensitivity. So typically with pain, we have this resting level here, and that's telling our that's our nerves telling us that we're alive and well. What happens, as Trevor demonstrated before, um, in that in the video with the guy touching his foot to the flame, is we hit this threshold. which sends that danger signal to the brain. The brain then takes that um, and combines it with all these multifactorial things that we've discussed, and you get that output of pain. And then afterwards, everything goes down, and you're back at that normal resting level. What can happen when you have all these other things going on in our life, and why some people may experience pain differently, is we have this resting level, and then say, uh, you know, we lost a couple hours of sleep, say daylight savings time, and now you're up here. So normally, we have this much room before that stimulus is sent to the brain. Now we're down to this much room, so it doesn't take quite as much. And then you find out that you have the flu. Again, we start to reduce that threshold there before that stimulus is sent back to the brain, processed and um, produced as an output of pain. And this can keep happening with more and more factors. Say we're anxious about an exam coming up or a big job proposal that we have to do. Um, it eventually gets to the point where you have such little room before that stimulus occurs. So things such as getting out of bed, getting up out of a chair, things that typically aren't painful or would cause tissue damage can become um, a, a large threat or painful to our body.